Well, hi there, friends. It is 6 a.m. on this Friday morning. Welcome to Up With Crim from the Spokane Arena. I'm yeah. Channing Curtis. Good morning. I'm Tim Pham. Welcome to this special edition of Up With Crim Tournament Central. We're getting you ready for the March Madness happening here in Spokane. That's right. And we have team coverage because it's not just, of course, Tim and myself out here. We also have our Brandon T. Jones and our meteorologist Thomas Patrick, who are holding things down for us there in the Crim 2 studios. They're letting you know about the forecast for this weekend because there is a lot happening across Spokane. And of course, Brandon is keeping you up with all the other headlines yeah. as well. That's right. We also have team coverage from all over the country also because we're following our local teams from coast to coast. We have our Amanda Rowley in Omaha, and then we also have Andrew Quinn in Salt Lake City. You know, they didn't book their return flight because <laughs> we are advancing to the round of 32. Both teams are. I got that Coog energy this morning. That's right. It's the only thing that's fueling me this morning because, yeah, it was a late night, Very. especially on this shift. <laughs> uh, we do want to get you out the door with meteorologist Thomas Patrick to give you your game day forecast. Hey there, Thomas. Good morning. You feeling that Cougar's energy, <laughs> that Zag's I, energy? I am absolutely feeling that Cougar energy, Tim. But let's also mix that in with some Bulldog energy as well. Both our teams making it to the round of 32. But we do got to get you ready for the day. I'm sure a lot of you that are awake with us probably just getting ready for another day of work for this Friday. Right now it's not bad. A little bit of uh, daylight starting to climb around the eastern uh, horizon there, but we're at 42 degrees and less windy today. And like yesterday, high temperatures will still be in the mid to upper 50s, which doesn't look too bad. Small chance of scattered showers today, but nothing to have to plan around, at least not for today. I think tomorrow we'll start to see a lot more rain because that storm system is starting to push into western Oregon and in some locations western Washington already. That moisture is going to take about 24 hours before it arrives, though. So come Coming up, I'm going to go in detail over this weekend's forecast when that rain arrives and how much colder it's going to be for the Saturday and Sunday locally. Back to our Tournament Central coverage. We're live at the Spokane Arena this morning because not only is March Madness happening on your television screens, but they're also happening right here live in Spokane at the Spokane Arena where eight teams will take the court. That's right, and not just the eight teams. All of their fans are going to be packed here into oh, yeah. the arena in just a matter of hours because that first game taking place here in Spokane at the arena tips off in just a few hours. That first game is taking place at 1045 this morning. It features the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and San Diego State University. Following that game, right after then, Auburn will take on Yale at 1.15 p.m. The winners of these rounds will then advance to play on Sunday. And let's take a look at the other four teams, including one who probably wishes maybe they were playing somewhere they haven't been before. We're talking about, of course, the number five seed, St. Mary's. They've been to Spokane before in the kennel, but they are one of the teams playing here in Spokane. The Gales tip off against 12 seed Grand Canyon tonight. Alabama and Charleston also play tonight at 735. Now we've talked about all of the teams that are coming here to the arena, but their fans are coming here as well. Tens of thousands of people are expected to descend upon Spokane for all of these games to watch their teams play. And probably a majority of those fans are from the state of Alabama. And that's because there are actually three Alabama teams that are going to be playing here today at the arena. They include the University of Alabama, the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and Auburn, all playing here. I actually caught up with some of those fans of the UAB. They're named the Heslops. And they actually started dating 45 years ago at the first University of Alabama, Birmingham game. And they told me that even though the teams are big rivals, there's still a lot of love. You know, in Alabama, there's huge rivalries between those schools, but because we're all sent, you know, 2,500 miles away, I suspect there's going to be a lot of teams rooting for each other from Alabama. So it's about 2,200 miles from Birmingham or 22,000 miles from Birmingham to Spokane, but these fans are no strangers to the Inland Northwest. All right, well, if you are visiting Spokane, we say welcome. We know you came a long way, all the way from the Southeast. I used to actually live in Tennessee, so welcome. And I also wanted to let you know some great things that our city has to offer. If you are at the Spokane Arena, what the great thing is that it's so walkable to downtown to some really great parks and really some great restaurants. But I went to Spok visit Spokane, who is our tourism agency in town, to let you know the best things you should check out while you're here.
Spokane Falls, you need to go check out the falls. Ride the gondola, walk down into Huntington Park and get up close because they're roaring right now. And then of course, all of our downtown restaurants, they're walkable from the arena, go check them out. I have to say I agree, but also you really need to check out this. You need to check out the Spokane Garbage Goat. Trust me, it's a must-see. It actually was installed 50 years ago this year for the World's Fair. And by the way, Spokane is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the World's Fair in just a couple of months. And if you haven't caught on by the video by now, it's not a real goat, but it has a vacuum in it that will, if you feed garbage to it, it'll suck the garbage right up. We're all about keeping our park nice and clean. So be sure to check it out at Riverfront Park. So now we've talked a lot about the men's teams that are playing for March Madness, but let's turn our attention now to some of the women's teams, especially our local teams like the EWU women's team. And that's because they're playing in their first NCAA tournament game and get this 37 years and they're playing a rival that's pretty close to home. They'll actually be taking on Oregon State here in just a little bit. It could be a tough matchup though for the Eags as they are playing the Beavers on the Beavers home turf. The EWU players though say that the, while they're grateful for the experience of even just being in the big dance, they say they aren't content with just being here. Yeah, just super fun just to be able to play in that atmosphere and for the team to experience, you know, that type of play. And um, I think for sure, just like knowing how good we are and um, how well we can compete. And so I think going into this game this year, it's going to be the same thing, embracing these moments and just having confidence in who we are. So Eastern Washington and Oregon State tip off tonight at 5 p.m. You can watch their game on ESPNU. And of course, we will have complete coverage following the game here on Crim 2. We're also following the Gonzaga women's basketball team. They'll open the tournament at home in the kennel. It's going to be rocking against UC Irvine. Tip off is scheduled for 4.30 p.m. on Saturday and also that game airing on ESPN2. And today, if you're looking for something to watch, Creme 2 is your tournament central. We have many games happening all day here on Creme 2. That's right, and they start pretty early. Directly following up with Creme is that very first game, tipping off at 9.15 a.m. Now, that game is going to feature Florida Atlantic and Northwestern. It's going to be a great, very exciting first round game. Then following that one, UConn, the number one seed at UConn, is taking on Stetson at 11.45 a.m. Then later this afternoon, Duke and the University of Vermont take the hardwood tip off for that game is set for 4 10 p.m. And the last game on Creme 2 today is the University of Wisconsin against James Madison, which starts at 640 tonight. Now, if you would like to learn more about the tournament taking place here in Spokane or to hear more from some of our local teams that are playing in the tournament, text us the word madness to our number 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link right to your phone with all of the information that you need to know. All right, and also this. Come on now, go Cougs. You hear a go Cougs, you gotta say go Cougs. Washington State got a tournament uh, win for the first time in 16 years. So do the math, that's 2008. That was a long time ago. So coming up in about six minutes, we're gonna be taking you to Omaha where we will hear from fans who saw it all. But first, let's take a look at the forecast with our meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Because Thomas, we've had a beautiful few days here in Spokane, but things are starting to change. Yeah, if you're staying through the entire weekend, note that Saturday and Sunday might not be quite as nice as it has been recently. Of course, welcoming uh, many, uh, you know, many fans and families and students to the Inland Northwest, many of them from Alabama. Now, I'm no James Spann, but I can always try my best. I just don't have the suspenders to match. Uh, for those games today here locally, should be a pretty nice day with temperatures in the 50s for most of the day, even in the low 50s by 11 a.m. and topping out in the upper 50s. Less rain than what we're seeing in Alabama right now, already raining in Tuscaloosa. As for our local teams spreading out, kept all four on the map. Going to rain not only in Corvallis, but here tomorrow in Salt Lake tomorrow and could be a rain snow mix in Omaha for the Cougs.